Hi, I'm Michelle. This is My So-Called Handmade Life. I have a blog called My So-Called Handmade Life, um, and I'm Mamatronic on Ravelry. Uh, I talk a lot about knitting here, but often about more things than that, especially today because I just got back from an Icelandic road trip. It was a lot of fun, um, and I'm going to tell you about it. I also have ongoing conversations going with viewers about just different things in our lives, things we're trying to accomplish and learning. And so uh, this is a little bit of a departure from that, but it has to do with the recent conversation and then we'll get back onto it next week. Um, I got back from my trip and jumped straight into prom decorating and senior prom. No, no. I'm sorry, I have to scare my cat away. She's trying to scratch the furniture. Anyway, um, <laughs> I don't just have Tourette's. <laughs> um, prom is insane in Texas, especially where I live, I believe. I posted a snippet of activities on Instagram and the consensus was in general that no, no other state did things like this in no other country. So. We dress our kids all up to the nines, you know, tuxes and formals, and then uh, they all met for a meal. The parents did pitch in and provide that, so it wasn't an expense. But then we rented and divided the rent for a party bus. They get on this party bus, music blaring, they arrive at the prom. There's this red carpet entrance. They pause and have their photos taken by the parent paparazzi, which is so funny because it's just moms and dads and their wife beaters and cutoffs, you know. Uh, talking like, oh, let me see, oh, isn't that so pretty, you know, uh, but they, you know, it's a big deal for them, and, uh, and then they enter the prom, and the party bus is insane to me, that's just crazy, but it is a safe way to transport them from there to the after party, so, uh, and there's parents chaperoning the whole time, anyway, that was kind of nutty, but they had a good time, everyone was safe, it was all good. So, success. I just feel so blessed to have been able to do this trip. You know, it's not about it being some exotic place to be um, or seeming so um, like a luxury to be able to travel at this time in my life. It was more about getting to know a knitting friend I made online and getting just a break from the everyday stress, time outdoors. It was the biggest blessing. I don't, I don't, I don't even know how to adequately say how grateful I am for the experience that I had when I was in Iceland at the end of April. Um, when I said that I wanted to go to Iceland, my husband knew uh, two years ago I had hoped I would go while he and my son did a hike at Philmont Scout Ranch but I just didn't feel up to it physically. I then said, well, maybe Wyoming, you know, that's in the States, I can drive there. But honestly, I was more worried about a long car drive. I was so weak and tired, physically had some hormonal things going on. I was afraid I would fall asleep at the wheel. Um, there's also more to be careful of in Wyoming, um, predators, bears, things like that. And I did want to do a lot of backcountry hiking and camping so those aren't worries in Iceland but I didn't do either I just kind of saved the money and uh, kind of bookmarked the idea so uh, when I said I wanted to go recently I heard a lot of various responses um, Iceland why Iceland what's there ice um, I heard, so who's this person you're going with? This is somebody you met online? This is a stranger? You're going across the world with a stranger? Um, I heard, isn't that kind of expensive? Or um, when I said I was just going to carry my backpack as my carry-on, how can you travel for a week with only one small backpack as your, you know, suitcase? Um, and then Another one was, I mostly heard this one when I got back, because a lot of people didn't even know I went until I was home. Two women alone in another country? Oh my gosh, my husband never would have let me do that. So uh, 
I just wanted to answer some of those responses. I give some responses to those things because they're all, you know, valid questions. Um, why Iceland? When I was 17, I had an extra elective and I took a high school geology class. Um, it was just kind of, I thought, you know, maybe kind of interesting. I was much more interested in it than I thought I would be. <clears throat> I took another course in <clears throat> college and I wasn't interested <laughs> in the lab, you know. Color this brown rock and somehow make it look different than this brown rock, you know. Um, wasn't as interesting to me then. But uh, I remember during this class we did, our, you know, we were talking about plate tectonics and the teacher was showing us a film and they showed <clears throat> Iceland where the mid-Atlantic Ridge is and where the uh, continental shelves are splitting and you know there's this crevice uh, with all this fiery lava magma coming up and the earth is splitting you know and it's a new earth is coming up and I found that so exciting the idea that there's this crack in the crest and you can look down and see a glimpse of the inner workings of the earth and all this that's coming up is new earth you know and it's people debated the age of the earth all that's happening but this is brand new earth I mean the materials were there but this is the first the newest crust earth you know that we have I just found that so exciting and I thought I want to see that. I want to go see that. What I imagined doing was flying in a helicopter over the fiery volcanic crack, but you know, that is a little, that would have been dangerous and I definitely would have elicited a lot of questions. Um, <clears throat> so that's why I wanted to do it. It's also a beautiful place. You've probably seen photographs. It's um, very pure. Um, it seems untouched. We really enjoy our travels to uh, national parks. We enjoy the fact that it's um, there's no hookups for campers, that um, it's kept very natural as much as possible, that they do as little paving and as few railings and fences as they can. But still, the drive to get into one of those parks is like, could be a two hour ordeal, just inching up a mountain, constantly road work on the roads, um, it's a big ordeal to get in there and say, aha, now I'm seeing some nature. Whereas you get to Iceland and it's just everywhere. Uh, most of the population lives in Reykjavik and the rest of the country, um, though it seems vast when you look at it on a map, it's about a third the size of Texas where I live. Um, it's just there, it's all out there. And it appears that they're doing a lot to preserve that now, as it becomes this hot destination for travel, um, I hope that they can always do that. So uh, that's just more reason to go. Um, and then this, who's this person you're going with? You're going to go with a complete stranger. Um, my dad asked me that, and I, he's like, what, what did she do? And I was like, I didn't actually know where she worked. I didn't, <laughs> um, a desk job, but she likes theater, Dad. You know, um, it. I guess it seems strange, but you knitters who are online, you know that we share a lot about ourselves. Um, Ravelry forums are a big way that we learn about one another. Knit-alongs. Uh, Katie and I met in the Holla Knits forum. It, doing all those knit-alongs with each, you know, um, collection that came out, there was always a knit-along. And then via Instagram, you really get a look into someone's everyday life because, you know, most of us post something every day, what we're making or what we're doing. You see family life, all that stuff. So I didn't feel like nervous about this. I was going to, you know, she was going to totally surprise me and be different than I believed. Um, when we were in the airport, though, she's texting, I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying, I'm almost there. And I'm like, now you're going you're gonna to find out I'm an 80 year old man, you know? <laughs> and she's like, you would really have to be doing a great job over these years of fooling me. Because, you know, my whole family has been exposed on Instagram, our, our life, our pets, it's all out there. Um, 
So I didn't feel like I was meeting a stranger at all. Um, and really, we had it, arranged it, it was actually cheaper for me to fly to LA and fly with her to Iceland than to go straight from um, Dallas is where I would have to leave from. So long drive, seven hour drive, and then fly. I decided to do that and I actually saved money. And you know, we could get to know each other better on the flight, but I didn't find that necessary. I felt like we were picking up where we had left off. So, uh, it, but I will say this, there was this little part of me um, that was worried that, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm weird, you know, what if I'm just too much. What if I talk too much? I'm just too me. You know, I never know how people will take me. And if you've ever been a little burned by people not accepting you or um, excluding you, you know how that feels. You always maybe have a little insecurity. It's just a little voice back there like, what if this person is just, you know, overwhelmed by you? But um, that really wasn't a big deal. I wasn't really that worried. And um, of course, it wasn't an issue. So we had a great time. I'm glad we did things that way. Um, you know, and all through um, following her on Instagram, I would see her do things outdoors, hiking. Uh, I saw that she did a solo backpacking trip in the last year. I was like, this girl is a girl after my own heart. We could totally do this trip together. And since I had kept the idea of going, I had mentioned to my husband a couple of years ago, would you want to go to Iceland or no, you know? And he's like, mm, not really, I'd rather go back to the Tetons. I said, well, if I go this summer, um, you know, actually he and I and our son, we went to the Tetons last summer. I was like, if I go a few months later with a friend, is that all right? He said, sure. So I had said on, uh, answering questions on Instagram, like 10 things you don't know about me or something, that I always wanted to backpack Iceland and Katie was like, me too. And I said, well, you should go with me. Sure, I will, let me know. It was kind of joking, but then I, I messaged her, are you serious? Because we really could do this if you want to. And she was like, well, yeah, absolutely. So anyway, it just took off from there. And uh, we planned it for about a year. and. You know, my grandmother was still alive at the time, and she had things, you know, she has her job and her other stuff she's doing creatively. Um, it actually was in the process of, I guess it's called staging a musical that she's written. All of that right before we left, but it all just worked out perfect, the timing, and we were able to do it at the end of April. So, I don't know, it was meant to be. Um, when people ask, you know, well, yeah, is that expensive? Uh, the flight is, but Wow Air is so cheap. It was like $500 flight from LA. That's not bad for going to Europe. Um, everything else, honestly, was comparable to if I had just gone to Houston. Uh, hotel stays, by splitting the cost with her, we didn't stay in hotels. We stayed in a hostel and then some Airbnb type places. We could have camped and it would have been dirt cheap. Um, meals, we had one nice meal out every day. Uh, and sometimes a little cafe for lunch, sometimes like gas station food. I feel like all the food and lodging and car rental was comparable to being anywhere else in Texas for a week. Had we camped, had we hitched or maybe gotten a bus pass, that would have all been cheaper. So if you can do Disney, you can do Iceland, definitely. I would say it's cheaper. I spent under $2,000 for this trip, and that includes my airfare, which was mm, maybe 800 So that's not bad. And like I said, when we started this, we were like, let's go the cheap route. It had just kind of morphed and we decided to um, rent a car and stay different places around the country, um, not camp, because we were just bringing our carry-ons. It's very hard to bring full camping gear in a carry-on and enough clothing to be warm and change clothes. Didn't know what to expect, you know, weather-wise, if we would need, how many changes of clothing we would need. So anyway, um, and then people say, well, how? How can you live a week 
with just a backpack full of belongings, you just don't change your clothes that much, <laughs> pretty much. Um, some things I could wear like a, I had like wool base layers, I could wear that three days in a row and it didn't smell because it's, it's not synthetic. Um, you know, a base layer, like a Under Armour or wool, uh, the fleece type warm running leggings, I would wear those, and then like a thin polar tech zip up jacket. And then over that, I could put a rain jacket if it were raining, and it was super thin. Um, Katie showed me, uh, you know, clued me in to this brand, Marmot um, Precip. It was super lightweight and thin. Uh, it could help retain heat if it was really cold in the low 30s, or if it's raining, it's good rain gear. So I could mix and match and change my layers as I wanted. I had a hat and gloves. I was totally warm the whole time. It was in the 30s the whole time we were there. It didn't drop much colder at night than during the day. So uh, it is totally doable. I didn't even have to bring as much clothing as I did. And I brought those big thick hiking socks which wasn't necessary. I could have just brought regular socks or some of my hand knit wool socks and I would have been fine and had more room. So. Um, than people saying, two women all alone, how can you do it? Iceland is considered really safe. It's a small population, like I said, not even the population of Houston. It's uh, much smaller than my state. Very rural, and um, the way the ring road that goes around it is set up, there's not even like traffic lights and things, there's just turnabouts. Um, I found it easy to navigate. Uh, we found that everything was laid out very clearly, um, especially if you have a GPS in your vehicle. Uh, people were friendly, and there's just a very low crime rate there. I felt safe. Like I said, safer than if I had driven across the country um, to a place I'd never driven at the time, Wyoming. Um, I felt safer going to Iceland. There are no bears, there are no snakes, there aren't even mosquitoes. There is nothing to fear as you're walking through high grass. That's not how it is in other places. I've stepped on a rattlesnake, I've run into bears twice, and once it was extremely interested in my family. <laughs> it could have been bad. We were in not a place that is not often hiked. Um, so uh, we've run into a mountain lion. Um, my daughter and I, so not actually touched it, but we were like a few feet away. So this was like, I can't explain how much safer I felt doing this. Um, but if all else fails, I reminded Katie, I am a black belt. <laughs> and that came up over and over again, you know, rocks are falling on the beach. Good thing you're a black belt, Michelle. Um, anyway, uh, we just had very loose goals for this. Um, it was kind of like uh, we wanted to do lots of walking and just absorb. And both of us were coming from stressful times, all good things, but still stressful things. Just rushed straight from that into relaxing, it's vacation. And so I felt kind of wide-eyed. I just had wonderment the whole time. I just wanted to absorb the landscape around me. And I wanted to walk on it, experience it as much as possible. Our goal was a couple of really long hikes. We didn't get that. Um, we got lots of little hikes and jaunts. Um, I wanted to see where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is, where the plates are splitting. Um, and I wanted to be able to carry my pack with me. Everything in one bag. If I had to 24 seven, fine, and it wouldn't kill my back, we had to camp great if along the way it just seemed like this was too expensive hey let's start eating gas station food and sleep in the vehicle one night I could totally do that I wanted to be able to just wing it and she did too and that was great and I thought we were well matched for that um, this going and trying to find a hike business was so funny this is Iceland everywhere it's beautiful landscape but you know, so much of what is around the ring road is people's farms, and it's fenced, um, it's someone's property. 
Hiking the ring road is great if you have a lot of time, but I mean, to park a rental car and just hike away and then hike back seemed kind of a waste of our resources. A lot of hikes were closed because of the weather. The benefit of going in mid-April is that it's not the summer season, so prices are cheaper and there just aren't many people there. I like that. But um, a drawback of that is the grass isn't as green, so you're not seeing all of the full color of summer. And a lot of uh, trails are closed because it's so wet and muddy as things thaw that uh, hikers will try to reroute and they're damaging the greenery in the land. So the country will close down trails like that and we found that to be true in a lot of areas where we had some major hikes planned. So we just had to shift gears. It became less of a serious hiking trip and more of a Icelandic road trip and that was fine with me. Um, it was it made me think of a chapter title in an E.M. Forrester novel. Um, Katie Canavan and Michelle Carter set out to find a hike. They go in their sad car. Um, a sad car is the rental agency we used, which my husband's like, sad car? What does that mean? You know, uh, just another thing to worry about as your wife heads out across the country with a stranger. Okay. <laughs> Where do I look? Here. Hi, okay. where's the camera? The camera is here. Okay, so first impression of Iceland. Uh, it's gorgeous here. It smells like smoked meats and fish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, it is sparsely populated, which I think was surprising to both of us. Right? Yeah. Um, I don't know, what else? What about you? Um, oh, things are not readily available that you think would be, mm -hmm. especially in a country where tourists are everywhere, at least during the summer. Right. right. Certain things were hard to find. Yes. Ladies products. Hard to find. Products. Iceland hates ladies. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, it was difficult for us to find that big hike we wanted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were mm -hmm. all planning to hike mm -hmm. and yeah. long hikes, carrying everything. We were ready to go. We were yeah. ready to rough and we it. We did like we three miles at a time. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't find anything, though. So no. it's not like we yeah. were, you know. We, we tried our best. Wimping out, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. We went all over the place looking yeah. for a hike. Yeah. And we did one, the one to the waterfall in Scafafell. Yeah. That one was like yeah. three miles probably. Mm -hmm. And then the glacier. Yeah. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that so was that nice. Was, that was good. It, we yeah. did a lot of walking, but it wasn't, you know. Yes, we did a lot of walking. Right. And a lot of boring walking. Um, so, we, uh, because we rented a car, we just stayed at Airbnb-like places, so like farmlands. Um, <clears throat> the first place we stayed um, was also the place we stayed the last night, was the Kex Hostel. I really enjoyed staying there. <clears throat> I think it was Katie's favorite place, too. They, it's, um, my sister stayed at hostels a lot when she was younger, and what I always heard, it's just different. I expected something very utilitarian and you do a chore while you're there, you know, to help with upkeep. It was a little more like a hotel, except there were multiple shared bathrooms on each floor. Uh, it made me think, it was so, Kex is so cool with a K, you know, um, very hipster. They had all of the quirky decor you would see in TV shows from like um, the mid-90s till today. Uh, big overstuffed club chairs, um, antique maps, you know, pulled down like artwork on the wall. Uh, they had old-fashioned antique curved frame uh, photographs, but it was a dog's picture instead of a person's in the frame. Um, when I, I'll put pictures up as I talk. Uh, just, it was interesting. It used to be a bakery, and um, they still serve biscuits in the morning with the Kex bakery uh, emblem stamped in the center of them. Um, so breakfast was provided, that's a savings. And then um, actually you could, they had 
I don't know if people there eat sandwich type foods for breakfast, but there were sandwich materials there. I'm sure plenty of people made a sandwich for lunch to bring with them. Another way to save. Good. Okay, favorite place to stay? I think my favorite place was the Kex Hotel in Reykjavik. It was like very hipster, yeah, cute, cool with a K. So cool. cool. Yes. So cool. We were almost too old to be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of young European kids. And the party um, went on quite late. Party went on for a long time. Construction also went on for a yes. long time. But I think in terms of look, that was like right. It. Except yeah, for it was and like they no offered pillow. a lot. Yeah. They offered yeah. a lot, but no. Here's what they didn't offer: a pillow. A good pillow. A real pillow. It felt like it had a few cotton balls in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to supplement the pillow. Yeah, that's when you know you're getting older. You think Where about I, your orthopedics this and that with your pillow. Yeah. Um, yeah, good. Yeah, a, a beer voucher. Oh, yeah, beer. Uh, mm -hmm. They had all these activities Delicious going beer. on, and they had um, a jazz band playing last night, yeah. which was nice. Which was nice. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah. Was, I was tired, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't do a jazz band. I did, like, a few <laughs> minutes. Yeah. So. so you're cooler than I am. <laughs> I just did it to say I did it, though. Very I was tired, good. too. Yeah. I wanted to go back and read. Yeah. <laughs> I was in a good place in my book. There we go. Right there. <laughs> Was your favorite place to stay? It was Kex, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't sleep well. I slept the you know. best at Gallery, I don't know how to say it, Logo Rotten? I don't know how yeah. to say it. But yeah. it was really nice. It was like a, a true cabin, our own so bathroom, cute. no shared bathroom, that was nice. Yeah. So. A nice mm. little room, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it was out in the country. It would have been a great place for viewing the Northern Lights. Were they visible while we were there? It's just too light this time of year. That's just gonna have to be for a trip in the winter. Other places we stayed were, like one was like a hotel that had um, shared restrooms, but we did have our own room. We weren't sleeping in a dorm, which is kind of what I thought a hostel would be like. No place we slept was like that. Something I noticed as we drove around, the light was, it seemed different, the quality of the light than where I live. Um, there was like a, a yellow cast to it. It made me think of the change in light before we have a tornado here. Uh, there's sort of a brownish yellow tint to it. That's how I felt the first day or two I was there. It was rainy and misty and um, that light, uh, it might would bring me down if I were at home, but it was so beautiful there. Um, it just seemed to add to the mood. It had a very mythic feel to it. And as soon as we landed, it was, it should have been late, late at night, our time, but in Iceland it was early, early morning. So we just checked into our place and <clears throat> got some coffee. We got coffee at a little coffee shop that was, there was just nothing to it. It was um, an espresso machine and a mini fridge with different kinds of milks maybe a few syrup flavors maybe and uh, while we were there she asked if we wanted to try some if we'd be there the next day because they were gonna have a tasting of some vodka the owner had made and it was like a vodka he had made with pineapples he had collected from the trash of different restaurants so it was like trash vodka it was so funny we weren't there for it but uh, what an experience that would have been the whole place has this real um, laid-back and artistic feel to it. It, you know, I may just be borrowing what I've read um, because I didn't see all that much of the city. I didn't go to any museums. We didn't see any galleries. We mostly spent our time out in the rest of the countryside. But just our stroll through Reykjavik, two days, um, lots of street art. Uh, 
it just seems like an interesting place. I'm interested to go back and spend more time in the city. So uh, we get our coffee and we head out for the Blue Lagoon. Um, you've heard about the Blue Lagoon. That's one of those must-see places. Well, it's a spa. They have uh, different packages you can buy. Ours was just the Lagoon and face facials, I think. So um, it was a really good time to go, though. It was uh, misting and raining, just kind of foggy. And as we drove up, I just could not believe what I was seeing. This thermal river type uh, lagoon area. The blue is exactly what you see in the photos. It's not an Instagram editing hack. It is um, just an insane bright blue, not quite turquoise. Um, we took a lot of photos and we were one of the first people there. So when we got in and got into the actual lagoon, uh, there was this fog hanging over it and it, it was cold outside. It was low 30s um, Fahrenheit and I was thinking this better be the thermal bath people say because I get into a pool in the middle of the summer and I'm freezing. So we make the short hike from the door of the spa to the water and oh my gosh it felt wonderful. And I am a person who can take an all hot water bath there were places that were too hot for me in the lagoon. It was nice. Um, and then as we walked around in it, you know, there's this mist hanging over it. You can barely see in front of you. It's like people will come towards you and they just appear out of the mist. It was so, it was like Avalon. It was just mythic. Beautiful. Um, it was large. We walked in all over. Um, there's a lagoon bar. They serve smoothies and um, champagne and you know as we walked around it started to get more and more crowded and as the day wore on in the morning uh, the fog lifted the mist and it was sunshiny and uh, still nice but getting more and more crowded so I was glad we went in the morning to really enjoy it as though we had just happened upon it. It was um, really fun to walk through. I wished I had, okay, I had a GoPro. I should have had it on and just walked about catching snippets of conversation. It was so much fun for us to listen to the things people were saying. I mean, they're from all over. Mostly it sounded like American accents, but, uh, you know, from a mother kind of fussing at her kids to these bridesmaids all in red swimsuits and the bride is wearing a, a, a veil in the water with her swimsuit and they're all talking about the best place to get their selfies and their photos to people hating the bridesmaids and the bride um, some guys talking and one of them confides that when he left to go for a summer abroad he cried like a baby at the airport um, it was just so much fun listening to all these perspectives and all these different people from all over the world. It seemed like mostly the States though, in the Blue Lagoon in Iceland. So it was nice. I'm glad we did it. And I'm glad we did it early in the trip. But we were so tired when we got back from that. It was so relaxing. And guys, if you go to the Blue Lagoon, put tons of conditioner in your hair and pull it up on top of your head. I didn't pull my hair up and you know I used to groom dogs and there's this stuff you like, it's like cornstarch type stuff you squirt in their ears if they have lots of ear hair and you kind of rub it around and it just makes the hair so brittle that you know you can just break it and it doesn't hurt the dog. That's what I thought was happening to my hair. I was scared. I combed and combed. I washed and washed, combed and combed, and I saw several other women just uh, 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 manically trying to comb the tangles out of their hair and they couldn't. It was like this dreadlock mess. And um, yeah, it took me like three days <laughs> to totally get that out of my hair. Um, yeah, I, I was a little worried there the first night. I thought, I think this is all gonna break off at the scalp. So I'm going to have short hair again. Um, some other places that were on our radar that were kind of a big deal. We saw 
Um, you know the geysers, uh, stroker. You've seen the sweater pattern. Um, we went there. I'll put in a clip. Take it away. Tell me all about it. What are we doing here? Hello, and welcome to Iceland. Michelle and I are on vacation here, traveling, uh, relaxing, and enjoying ourselves in nature. Today we stopped at Geyser, which is home of a geyser. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Stroker, and it erupts every eight to ten minutes. So we're just waiting for it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Golfoss is a waterfall that is a big one to go see. It's a big deal, and I see why. You know, you walk out to it, and you can you can see stand over it and look down, or you can go down a lot of steps and get really close to where the falls begin because they kind of fall in tiers. And when I stood next to the first tier, as they rolled down on the rocks. It so loud and powerful. I've not been next to a waterfall that powerful before. I could feel it, the sound like reverberating in my chest. Um, that was that was a neat experience. And then, you know, as you follow with your eyes, it drops down this final tier into a ravine and mist is just pouring upward from the fall. sunlight glinting and the droplets uh, in the air kind of making a rainbow cast and then you see people off in the distance on a cliff looking from a different perspective. It was so beautiful. Katie said this looks like something from Lord of the Rings. It really did. Especially with those people dotting it. I just it looked like you know people from another place. Uh, when I was reading on about the sagas, uh, I read that one of the major saga writers, uh, Tolkien had wanted students to study his writing alongside Shakespeare at Oxford. And I, I don't think that ever took off, but he did have a group that met together and learned to read it in the Icelandic. And Iceland was a basis for Middle Earth, for The Hobbit. Um, and even some of the names of characters like Gandalf, and I've always thought this, that Gandalf the wizard look was very Odin-like. Um, although his character is not at all like Odin is supposed to be in myths. Um, but the name Gandalf is from one of the uh, sagas. It's the name of a dwarf. So anyway, that's an interesting little fact. Makes it a little more... Um, I don't know, adds to the effect of going. Uh, so we had a few, um, a few, you know, later we went to uh, the Secret Lagoon. I don't know if you've ever looked up places off the beaten path in Iceland, but there's some blog posts of people who went to the Secret Lagoon and they have photos of it. There's like an old crumbling facade of a little bath house changing building. And then there's this lagoon. Um, no one's around. We looked and looked for it. So finally we just listened to our GPS and we went where it was sending, sending us and it just looked like some local, I don't know, snow cone stand and a pool. That's it. I mean it's, it's a not so secret lagoon. Uh, but it was kind of fun because this was later in our trip. Um, after having been to the Blue Lagoon where there's champagne and everyone's walking around with this face spa face mask on, um, it was kind of neat to go to a place where it was all like water noodles and beer. <laughs> um, it did feel like a local pool. It was kind of fun to see. And again, really, really nice warm water. Um, but we did have a few little fails on our trip. We, um, well, okay, the first fail on my part was the sweater. Doesn't look like a fail now, does it? This is my birch from, um, oh, I don't have it, from Pam Allen's um, 
plain and simple knits collection. Uh, I love this sweater. Okay, let me just show you kind of how it looks. There we go. Um, you know, it's got this Icelandic type yoke, and I've been working on it. And I thought, you know what? I was close. I was, I was when I when it neared time for my flight. I was on the yoke. So I was like, I can finish the body of this, and if I have to work on one sleeve on the plane or two sleeves, I'm going to have eight plus hours of flying. I mean, all together, you know, ten hours at least, and more at the airport. I can totally do worsted sleeves in that amount of time. And then I didn't have to carry a sweater in my carry-on, you know, so I'm conserving. And if worse comes to worse, I can wear it on the plane with waist yarn at the sleeve, where the sleeves are supposed to begin. So I had it all figured out. Then I started working on it. Timing is going good. And I get right up to about here and I realize that I'm following the chart carefully. But the colors from main color and contrast color were inverted. So everything that's here white was green. And the other way around, it just didn't look as good. Then they had also left out these two um, border uh, rows that kind of outline this stripe of Fair Isle. So it just didn't look, um, it didn't look right. So I had to rip it all the way back. And I thought, okay, I can still do this. But there was so much last minute prep for this trip. I just didn't get it done. I, I bound off the neck, went, and I had everything else packed, and I went to sleep for three or four hours, and then I woke up for my flight. I, so Jane, I pulled one of those things like you did with your, your shawl, for Zion, where I just knit, 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 knit like crazy for a couple of evenings late at night, didn't get the sleep I needed, so that I could have my sweater project and take FO photos in Iceland, because what better place to take finished object photos of a sweater than when you're in Iceland? It's so beautiful there, and here's this yoke sweater. It's perfect. It's all Scandinavian. So I get on the plane. My first flight, I've got were squished in there and I've got this guy sleeping next to me. He's got his hoodie pulled over his head and he's like leaning this way and that. And I'm trying so hard to unpick my um, little sleeve stitches without making too much movement. I don't want to be obnoxious on the plane and I slowly unpick, you know, whatever, 80 stitches. And it was a, um, what do you call that cast on where you're, uh, you have to actually unpick each one. It's not like you just pull and yank. Totally obnoxious. It took forever. I get them all unpicked, get my needle in there, and I go to look for my yarn. I left the sleeve yarn at home. So I just left my needles in it, tucked it in my pack, and I pulled out another project. That was my first fail. <clears throat> what I pulled out was my, um, oh, this sock. It is uh, Danny George's Twas the Night Before Christmas, but, oh, I should have a sock blocker. Let me get one. So the sock project I chose was Twas the Night Before Christmas, but I didn't do the trees. I just did something simple for on a plane. I did the twisted uh, rib cuff, and then I did those that twisted rib stitch with the pearl relief on either side. It's like a little bit of ribbing all the way down to the toe. And I did finish this sock on my trip and began a cast on the second, but I didn't get finished with it before I got home. I felt um, like I was reading and things too. Anyway, this is Sweet Sparrow Yarns. It's like peppermint mocha, I think is the colorway. It's really pretty. Um, I think actually we talk about our projects. I'll just put that clip in here. And that's the pattern. This is the fine and dandy sock. Show the colors for your toes and heels. Super cute. Neon. Yes, it's green. So neon. It really, really shows. I think this is the pickle colorway from Knit Picks. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Is it really called that? I think so. I lost the, cool. the, the ball band I've forever ago. I never used a neon from Knit Picks. I yeah. Think I got pink once. I got, yeah, yep, mm -hmm. I got the neon pink and I got this neon greenish, cool. yellowish, yep. Mm -hmm. So you'll have plenty of time. Nine I will hours. Have nine hours to finish <laughs> this. <sock. laughs> Dear God. And here's mine. I 
I'm doing Danny's Twas the Night Before Christmas socks, but I'm not doing the trees. I'm just doing the little uh, twisted stitch, little relief there with pearl, twisted stitch pearl, all the way down the length of the sock. And I did cut down because I just like it. And which yarn is that? It's better. This is Sweet Sparrow Knits. Um, something like peppermint mocha. It's so cute. Something. Anyway, yeah, it's like a little micro stripe. I love it. And a little shiny. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit of shine. Oh, don't look at my great fingernails. <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> look, this is the truth about wow. Such a blast from the past. So, you know, I say it's a fail. It's not really a big deal. I took FO photos anyway. I took almost FO photos. And you can see my needles uh, in them. I didn't care. I was in front of a glacier. I was um, by Svartafoss. Who cares if I have unfinished uh, sleeves? And you know, the truth is, there were a lot of Icelandic sweaters with that were sleeveless, like uh, little just vest type sweaters uh, for sale. Yeah, so, I'm thinking of, of the it. beach. We had a major fail in Iceland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that we tried to uh, walk to a, cra a plane crash, the site of a plane crash on the beach, right. thinking it was maybe. Half mile, mile away. Right. Because we don't, you know, we don't read signs. We didn't read the sign. <laughs> we're and we're we just in Iceland. We don't need to read signs. The perspective of the beach was so that it looked like it was right. much closer than it was. Because we saw lumps in the, you know. The lumps were rocks background. on the beach. <laughs> right? <laughs> we thought the lumps were the plane crash and they were not. Right. So about 45 no. minutes into the walk, we were like, we're done. Wow. Uh, hey this guys, is our whole day. So let's turn and go back. And it was windy and cold. And then we noticed the sign that said, oh, three to four hours of your life goes into seeing this plane crash. Yep. So. And we were like, nah, -uh. yeah. no, thank you. Uh, another fail was our, um, we wanted to go to a place called Stung. It was a city where, I say city, more like a little tiny town. And some of these towns are basically just a street, a road, a country road with two properties off of it. Um, this place has a uh, ruins of a Viking longhouse, and I thought that would be kind of cool to to go through. And there's a trail from that to a little hidden meadow. I mean, it's not truly hidden, but a lot of people don't know about it, so it wouldn't be a major tourist trap. And of course, the time of year we're going, there weren't many people looking for these things anyway. So we headed out and looked and looked. We had a lot of trouble. Um, the GPS, the way streets were roads were different than the map so it was a little hard to uh, and if it wasn't a well-known area you couldn't just type in an attraction or a tourist site so we, we looked and looked we spent a whole morning doing that and that little meadow area is called um, Gowan so we looked and looked and we finally found a reproduction longhouse it was closed um, so that just never really took shape. When we did finally find the road that led to the stone um, longhouse in Gowan, uh, it was closed because hikers were damaging the land. So we wasted our time. It was okay. Um, from that point though, we wanted to maximize our time. And so we're like, well, let's go ahead and go to Reina Stiata, the black sand beach because that's on the way to Vic and we were going to go stay in Hof that night. So it was all on the way. We would see the cliffs, all of it. Where we got out, you could see, it's like a land bridge going out into the ocean. Um, I think it was once like an island that it goes out to, but now enough of it is exposed that it's like a land bridge. And it's called um, Dirolai. Uh, it means like, um, let me see the hill island with the door hole or a cape of doors. Um, it's really beautiful off in the distance, kind of misty and vague. Um, you know, and the water is coming in on black sand. I mean, it is, it's basalt, just pounded by the rock, the waves into fine stones. Really, there's like river rock is what it looks like, basalt river rock all over. And, uh, it was really beautiful. Then you can see off to the other side, 
<clears throat> these sea stacks of basalt. Oh, the myth is that it's two trolls that went out into the water to pull a three-masted ship in, and as they were dragging it in, the sun dawned, caught them, and they were frozen in their tracks, so they didn't quite make it. And the look of one of the stacks has the three-masted uh, ship outline to it, so it's just neat. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So then we went and almost died right after that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Mom won't watch this. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, we went to the Black Sand Beach, and they said had the orange warning. Right. You know, but nobody listens to orange warnings or anything. So um, it was fine. we thought it was fine. Mm -hmm. Everybody um, was there. Everybody had their children sitting mm -hmm. on the rocks. I mean, if it yeah. was dangerous, why would a person put a child exactly. there? Exactly. Exactly. So the warning was specifically for flash waves and falling rocks. Right. And the good news is that we didn't get hit by a flash wave. Right, right. <laughs> or, or a rock. We didn't get hit by a rock. It was very close but though. Yes, we heard very bonk close. right yeah. between us. We were like, Ooh, <laughs> and then we did a shag and a scoop and got out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. That, that's that was our we almost adventure, died in Iceland. Yeah. right? Adventure? Mm -hmm. Very adventurous. That's also where the rock formations in the, it's kind of a geometric hexagonal like basalt formation, like the Giant's Causeway in Ireland. Um, though my, sis, my daughter went there, uh, <clears throat> it, it looks, the Giant's Causeway looks like a really large area. This isn't very large. Um, I'll, I'll put in footage here. Um, you can see kids playing on it, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, it's kind of like a columnar formation. It has to do with the way that the um, magma comes up out of the fissure and then hardens uh, if it cools fast enough and then it contracts and it breaks apart in pieces and they're these little shapes that are geometric and then the way water and things uh, erode them you see them in like a step formation so anyway I, I probably put in a picture already but there's those coming off the cliff you know coming like steps but then there's this cave, a sea cave, and it's like the inverse of that. All those formations show from the inside where the water has washed inside of it and uh, eroded. So it's really beautiful. But that's the area where the rocks were, fall were supposed to be falling, and it is where they fell. <laughs> but I have since watched videos of the sneaker waves, and the tide's coming in and out at a measured rate, and then all of a sudden it comes way far in and you know all the way to the cliffs so really anyone walking on that beach is going to get in the water and then it rips back out I don't know that it could pull someone in if they were all the way to the cliffs but uh, Katie met a guy at the airport and he said that he had been in Iceland two years before when an entire family was pulled out and drowned at sea by one of those waves um, so uh, the warnings are real <laughs> They are legit. Um, good thing I have my black belt, right? <laughs> um, what else? What was your favorite meal? Oh, the fish market. Mm. Definitely. <laughs> the fish market. It was good. The fish market in Reykjavik. It made me very sad because I was so, so full. Mm -hmm. And then I had to waddle back to our hotel. Yeah. But it was delicious. It was delicious. It was good. And it, it's whatever the chef feels like making. Yeah. We had got so the tasting menu. We had no idea Five what courses. we would be eating. Extremely delicious. It was very good. Um, and just the right size for everything. Of course, you know, we were stuck. But <laughs> I also but liked uh, Suter Vik. Suter the, Vik. Yeah. yeah. In Vik. That was a nice little cafe. So yeah. And I got the char. What did you get? I got... Oh, the you, asparagus you got, soup. I, I thought you got duck salad. I'm that was at... Yeah. Foss Hotel. So many nice places. Yeah. And from the cafe window, I could see the sea stacks, the trolls, uh, and that Reynestiata, or I guess the sea stacks is called Reynestranger. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to pronounce these things. Um, so we just had, I just remember feeling such a, a calm. It had been a really good day. I, my mind was kind of blown by all the beauty that I had seen and witnessed and felt under my feet the patterns of the rocks at the Gullfoss, the pattern of the basalt, like 
washed smooth by the ocean. It just, it was just, I don't know, a, a moment of really great peace. And we had good conversation. I just thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, we had, I, I think every, every meal out that we ate was. Yes, very good. So good. Even the gas station sandwiches weren't that bad. <laughs> they were, it was different. It was, right. it was, I felt like I was experiencing the culture. Right. Uh, fish with every meal. Fish with every meal. Every meal. Mm -hmm. It was good. And real bread, like homemade bread. That's probably my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, the bread. My favorite thing from this entire trip is number one, the Glacial Lagoon. Number two, the homemade brown rye bread at every single meal with like right. a gigantic mound of butter. And cheese at every meal and mm -hmm. homemade mm -hmm. ice cream twice. Yes. Really yeah. good. Yeah. It's all super fresh. The fish is so, so different than our fish. So delicious. I don't know how I'm going to do salmon again. Oh, I know. It's not, not going to taste the same. Not as fresh. Yeah. Right. Something I noticed about all the food that we ate there, um, the vegetables were special. I find that vegetables are just like an added necessity at many of the places around me to eat here in the States. Um, and it's often something that's kind of junked up, you know, like um, squash casserole type thing. So it's got like cheese and wheat and stuff thrown in there. Graham, you know, crackers crumbled up. It's not really like a pure taste of the vegetable. I don't know, there just seemed to be more of an enjoyment here. I don't know if it's because traditionally uh, fresh vegetables and greens were, were hard to find. I don't know if that's it or if it's just such a hip happening place that they are serving healthier dishes. I don't know, but I loved asparagus soup. I liked all the side dishes I had. Lots of root vegetables, um, potato terrine, uh, beets. Beets in my salad it was just very good, all special. The next day, I believe, is we woke up. We stayed in Hof, which was, like I said, basically a road, a little farm road out to two properties, and they had little cabins built. We stayed there. We ate at um, mm, the Foss Hotel, which was just a little down the ring road. Really nice hotel, beautiful, kind of modern in design, and then this whole wall of windows for viewing the northern lights at that time of year, when it's that time of year. The restaurant was great. Um, and then we headed out to um, York Salon, the, you've heard of, I, I probably said it wrong. The, um, look, at least I'm not saying it in a Texas accent. York Salon, um, it's the glacial lagoon that's been in a lot of movies and things like James Bond movies or something. Tomb Raider video games, I don't know. Um, it's, a, it's awesome. It blew my mind. I'd seen photos, but it was so much larger than I realized. Um, it's just where parts are breaking off of this glacier. But it's part of that larger ice cap, that Vatna Gyokul. Uh, and it's, it did, I read that it was like, takes five years for these pieces floating in the lagoon to make their way out of the little outlet into the ocean. So, you know, we're just walking around and it, I think it's 17 square kilometers is how large this lagoon is. It was just beautiful. My photos do not capture the color. They do not capture it. And Katie saw seals swimming around between the ice chunks. I didn't. What was your favorite? My your favorite. favorite thing. Well, I I loved the glacier I lagoon. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you you Hands go ahead down. and say what it's called. Um. <laughs> Jol Jolkerson. Jol Jol I <laughs> uh, forget how it's spelled. It's Yokosalon. Yeah. Yeah. It's a glacial lagoon uh, and it is gorgeous. And it's so much bigger than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Gigantic. And I see little pictures, you know, online and they yeah. talk about Tomb Raider and James Bond. They filmed there, but yeah, that just sounds like. It was so much you know, more than either of us thought it was going to mm -hmm. be. And there was it's hardly anyone like, there. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty like. Pretty empty, pretty epic. Which was the good point about everything we did. Yeah. There was mm -hmm. hardly anyone there. Which is nice about the 
off season. Right. Yeah. Because we hate people, so <laughs> That's why we needed here. it to be that way. Together. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, what else? What's your least favorite? Oh, my least favorite thing. Shoot. I don't know. <laughs> I liked everything. Um, yeah, there wasn't anything that was super bad. I don't think. I can't. We saw think. a lot of waterfalls. We saw a waterfall so a day. So many. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Scoff. Uh, Scoff. Scartafoss. Scartafoss mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. beautiful. It, yes. It's the one I thought. Oh, that's so graphic. I've got to take a picture. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, it was. It was, was fun. That the it was one a nice one. From the highway? No, that was the Scott DeFell. We got to it and mm -hmm. you know with the lava rocks yes. and it's falling yeah. over it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's just been so mm -hmm. many guys. So, it's hard to keep those waterfalls right. straight when you see one every single day. Mm, that's right. Beautiful epic waterfalls. Let me tell you, we have waterfalls in Malibu, but they're little trickles compared to <laughs> We don't have waterfalls at all. What? Yeah. So it was great for me. Yeah. Um so we uh, another high point we saw Sparta Foss. That's a um, really picturesque waterfall. You've probably seen photos. It looks kind of like the inverse of that church in Reykjavik, the um, Halt Grimskirka church. Uh, it's a, more of that the basalt column uh, structures, like lava rock. It's black. It's so graphic with the waterfall, the frothing white water coming over it. It's beautiful. Um, I really enjoyed visiting Skoftafels because that's where Skoftafel is where uh, that waterfall is, and there's several other hikes close down, all of them, except a little short. I mean, it was like three miles or so to a glacier, and uh, we enjoyed that and being right up against this glacier. I've seen one other glacier that I remember up close that I realized what it was, Schoolhouse Glacier, so small in comparison. This thing was huge. It's just a tiny finger of this ice cap, but it was so enormous looking to me. It was just, the scale is hard to understand. I'm thinking, okay, this whole country is like a third of the size of my state, yet this stuff in it is huge. This ice cap is the biggest ice cap in Europe. It's as big as all the other ice caps in Europe put together. Just hard to imagine. So uh, that's where I took photos of birch. Um, it, Katie took them. And so. then we did go see that Thingfelder uh, Park where I wanted to see the, the crevice between the continental shelves. Um, and that crevice I think is called the Almanagia. Uh, but it was just really cool to walk between the two because there's like a rock wall on either side and that's where a lot of um, you know Iceland used to be like um, I don't know how you would what I would say about the government um, <clears throat> different clans would come and meet for their all thing there um, it was sort of like their Congress and then later even when they were ruled by Norway they had um, government type meetings and made decisions there. Um, and that, that waterfall site, the pool around the base of it is also, I believe, Katie read that women were um, drowned there if they were accused of incest and the men were beheaded. Um, so a lot of judgment uh, was a lot of judgment took place there. So anyway, it, it was just an interesting place. They've got a, um, a flag set up where they believe the speakers would stand to speak to all the heads of the families and areas uh, in there. You know, Iceland was, so it's still so small. It was like, um, there wasn't, I don't think there was a great class structure there. I feel like everybody was pretty much farming. It was farming community. Right. And one thing we read in some of our, um, like I had a, a guidebook on my phone. It talked about uh, a visitor from Scotland said that after one of the huge eruptions that happened, I, I forget what volcano erupted, but the ash, the fallout of it, it, the cloud of it affected much of the world. The people of Iceland, like 20% of the population were killed and 
those that were left, he said, years later, they walked around like little skeletons, tottering. Um, some who survived, survived by boiling and eating their clothing. They survived by things like birds eating the, uh, what do you call them, puffins. Um, it was uh, horrible. It was horrible. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, moving on from that happy subject. Um, no, okay, <laughs> so what's one thing you've learned about Iceland that you didn't know before? One thing that I learned about Iceland was something that you read to me out of the guidebook. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it is the coolest thing. It's so cool, yeah. which is that there is a crevice down the center of the country that is separating at a rate of two centimeters per year, which is the same rate that your fingernails grow at. And mine grew. Oh, they're bad. So did mine. On this trip. I just clipped them in the airport. Oh, I mean, in the I didn't bring clippers because I wanted bathroom. to save the weight. Shade I was that weird person. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't clip your toenails in the bathroom. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Somebody did something in that bathroom. Okay, that's all I know. All right. But what did I learn? When oh, and five Icelanders will write a, a book at some point in their life, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, it's amazing. They're very literary people. I loved it. Yeah, it was a good, wonderful to be there. Yeah. So you're gonna come back? Yes, I think so. Me too, me yeah. too. I wanna read the sagas and I wanna yeah. uh, like travel through where the sagas took place. And do the north, north side and do like the entire ring road. Yes, yes. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Um, just this whole trip, I just saw God's power on display. That nature, um, it blew my mind. It was, it was what I wanted. It was what I wanted to see. And you know, I was moved our conversation on from living simply as part of our kind of a pure, simple, wholesome life, getting outdoors, moving more, using your body more. It's an integral part of a healthy lifestyle, right? We all know that, but it's easy not to do it. If you work, if you have to drive a lot, Everything's kind of convenient and just sort of sit where you are, tap a remote, get in your car and go. Um, I just realized how much I need to be outside. I really do. I've always been that way as a kid. I would have pent up energy inside and I would burst out of my house and run. Run a few miles and come back, okay. But even today, I just need that. And it's really nice to not just do it on roads that are busy streets, um, through a refinery. I just felt blessed to be somewhere different, to be breathing fresh air and walking around. The food there felt just a little purer. There's not the hormones and the pesticides and... But, you know, we don't have to be somewhere across the world and go to an exotic locale to reap the benefits of being outdoors. Obviously not. And I did come home reinvigorated to be outside. Uh, Katie's already done a hike I saw on Instagram. Um, I'm just running every day. <laughs> just getting outdoors and running down the boring streets, you know, around my home. But um, we did see one more place where uh, all knitters who go to Iceland have to visit. We went to the Alafoss Lofi store. And part of our packing plan was that we would have room to bring home enough Lofi, at least for a sweater or something. Um, I was thinking maybe a hat or, you know, a scarf. I just couldn't imagine I could fit a sweater's worth in my pack. But once I got there, I started looking through the Lopi books and seeing sweaters I wanted to make. Uh, I knew I had to bring a sweater's quantity home. And it was much cheaper than when you buy it in the States. So, and then like, this is all like Lopi, pretty much, <laughs> from the Lopi store because yeah. everybody wants to go there, yeah. right? When yeah, get that's, to a, that's a normal Iceland destination. Yes. So, yeah. um, and what did you get there? Um, I got a sweater's quantity of wool. Worsted weight in a yellow. Oh wait, <laughs> she doesn't have, have any a yellow, yellow sweater. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a different like a, yellow. I was gonna say it's like a brighter yellow. It's like gold an egg yolk. Yes, yellow. Yes. And then, and then, 
yellow and gray in order to do like a traditional Icelandic. Yeah. But I'm gonna make it mini because I live in Southern California, so it's gonna be cropped and it's gonna be like elbow length. It's gonna be really cute. Mm -hmm. And what was the motif? Kind of a, a star flake? Yeah, kind of like a, yeah, like the traditional like yoked, yeah, yeah. star. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. do something. I don't know the name of it. Gubra fluffer fluff. And yeah, it's yeah. just a, a lopey pattern. pattern. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And I tried to pick the colors that we saw the most, yeah. which, which was there's amazing. not a lot of the that. summer green that you see in, in no. uh, photos, but you know, there was hay color and then yeah. moss turning green. So moss, almost yeah. green about this color. So that, and yeah. blue sky, and yeah. the color of clouds. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. It's gonna be amazing. So. While we were out hiking, uh, we were like looking at the sky and imagining this sweater, and then Michelle yeah. was gonna make it so. Yeah. I'm gonna make it happen. <laughs> yeah. But you killed me with what is it called? We don't know. It's another one. Anyway, um, the sweater. Oh, that, the sweater. Yeah, 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 it's got yeah. this yeah. stand up collar, yeah. and it's also a lovely pattern from Lovely yes. 36. Not the, you guys know, and it's got the sleeve yeah, it a, detail at the end of the sleeve. It's a geometric motif. Right. Yeah. And it's super so big cute. and cozy and yeah. bulky, and mm -hmm. we, neither of us will ever need to wear the no. sweater, but it has to be made. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> someday. So, someday. Any, uh, any other thoughts? I don't think so. I feel. I feel like we covered it. All right. Mm -hmm. So you've got to come to Iceland. Yeah. And then let and us know because you can meet nice people on the internet to go with you. <laughs> really? <laughs> if you're lucky. Right. If you're lucky. You'll right. Meet nice people on the internet. Yep. Ah. So when we were at the Thingfelter uh, Park, there was this one place where we're walking along that Alamanga and we saw just the colors that we've been seeing of Iceland, the, the grass that was the color of hay, and then the greening grass and moss, the black basalt rock, brilliant blue sky, brilliant blue water when the sun was out. The water was brilliant. The moss was going from kind of a, a yellow to green. It was this color. Um, then you had the brilliant blue of the water and the sky and when the sun was out um you know i told you there was that yellow cast to the light the days that it was overcast and raining when it wasn't it was a brilliant clear sky and the blue was just brilliant really more more intense than this color but this is what they had so here i've got clouds the foam of the water the waterfalls the basalt rock the the moss and grass turning and the sky. I would have liked to have added the yellow kind of a hay color, but I couldn't find a pattern that would support five colors that I liked. So the one I went with is, I forget the name of it. It's oh, off Miley, that's what it's called. And it's got a picture of like, it looks like a whole family wearing versions of it. It's a free pattern for Lopi's um, 20 year anniversary. I, it's only a three color pattern. So I'm going to work in my, um, one of my colors, the probably the blue. Uh, I'll do this, as the, this is the main body color. This will be the border to the color work that separates the yoke design. And I'll have the, the white, the same as in the picture, and then I'm going to work this blue in somehow. So it's mainly going to be that grello color. Whoop, here we go. Just like the older guy there. So I'm excited to do it. Uh, there were so many tempting patterns there, though. Um, and then the fitting of this into our luggage, we, we came back and immediately we started um, <laughs> working on how, okay, how are we going to get this down? Uh, how are we going to fit this? And I'm putting it in a plastic bag, and so I'm squeezing and squeezing and squeezing all the air out, but then they pop back It'll open. work. This is a highly work. scientific process. Highly scientific. I wish I had one of those. I have to make this yarn as small as possible. This is the way you do it, folks. Mm -hmm. Back 
backpacking and still bringing home a sweater's worth of <laughs> yarn. We can do it. The twill be flat. Look at that. <laughs> Mostly flat. Yeah. Um, I worked hard to get this to fit. My purse, not carry on. My purse that I carried was that was just this. It was very puffy. Um, so that was all really. That was a lot of fun to go to the Lopi store, and we were we were in there, and this woman walks in with her family, and she's just looking around, just like us, wide-eyed, and her son walks up and says, Mom, is it everything you ever dreamed? And she's like, yes. And they were just so um, excited for her to be excited. It was sweet. The, the dad's like, here, well, well, what, did you look over here? And did you look up? And the kids are watching her watch. It was so sweet. And, I posted something on Instagram about it, and my daughter said, too bad your family would be like, are you done yet? But they wouldn't have when they were younger. Even now, she plunked herself down and just sat down at Hill Country Weavers while I spent an hour looking at things, and they were prepping for an Andrew Mowry visit, and one woman kept treating her like she was in the way by sitting in the chair and trying to get her to move. So. She was extremely patient at the yawn store for me. So um, I guess that's all I really wanted to tell you guys about my trip. Um, my, just my overall impression was that this was God's power in nature. It's so uh, purely demonstrated. You can see so much happening in that one place. Oh, oh you should go if you haven't. You should go before it changes any further. Um, those uh, the glaciers have in the past thickened and then thinned off and on but they are thinning at a very high rate now so it'll cause changes also you know Iceland's growing <laughs> just a little bit every year so uh, you better see it before it gets too big there's one thing I didn't get to do and I wanted to first of all I wanted to thank Jane for giving me Jane Bramley, Rose in the Rim, on Instagram. She sent me a postcard with one of her bags I ordered. This is a beautiful trail. This is a photo she took of a trail that was above, uh, uh, not Spartafoss, um, Skogafoss, the falls, which is another big one. You can see it from the ring road, and we did see it, and we didn't stop. I don't know why, Jane. Um, she said there's a trail above it. This leads to the falls, and it's not got a lot of people. And I read online about it. They, they said it was a really great um, natural place to be, to walk along. And it was one of her favorite hikes that she took while she was there. I totally meant to do it. And then it's like I just got all, I don't know, like just uh, waterfalls, beautiful rock formations. Uh, I couldn't think straight. And I did not think about, we passed Skogafoss, and I thought, wait, I know which one that is. But then it's like, oh, something else came up, and I forgot. The last day we were there, it was too late to go back. We were in Reykjavik. I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot that hike. That could have been our perfect hike that we were looking for. As it is, we had Skoftafil, but this would have been beautiful. Look, you guys, don't you want to go there? <gasps> The grass and the moss was not quite so green when we were there, but I find that uh, I'm fine with trading off greening grass for not as many people. That's nice. And let's see what time she was there. Oh, she doesn't say. But I'm thinking it was spring or summer because that is a very a lush green color. So. Dagmar, also, thank you for giving me your map of yarn sites, yarn stores and things in and near Reykjavik. We only went to one, we went to Lopi, because this was a very countryside-centric trip. But I'm keeping the map for the next time I go, because one day I do want to spend more time in Reykjavik. And you know, it's a good stopover. It's often uh, no extra cost to have a layover, a stopover in Iceland if you're going to Ireland or Europe or something. Um, so it's a good time to get to know just the city of Reykjavik for a little while while you're there. So I, I want to learn a little more about the people and the culture there. 
which we didn't get a lot of because of just being, you know, on the road and alone outdoors quite a bit, which was my favorite thing. So, um, since I got home, I've been asked, would I do it again? Oh yes, I would. I'm already planning. I want to go back. And this time, <clears throat> I'm going to finish this book before I go. This is the sagas. Um, I'm going to finish it and try to kind of trace where some of these things happen. The sagas are partly based on real places and family lines and things, but then there's myth involved too. Um, maybe depending upon who writes it and the individual story, but a lot of it I think happened in the west and the northern part of the country, so I wasn't there anyway, so it didn't bum me out too bad that I hadn't finished this. I hadn't even started it. I was on the introduction <clears throat> when we left. It just got away from me time. So I'm going to do that. Uh, my husband wants to go. And then I mentioned going back to my daughter and she was like, we want to go. I think if the whole family went, it would be the most fun. I think we would all be up for the hiking. Everyone likes to do it now or can do it. And <clears throat> yeah, I think it will happen. Um, I have some tips for you guys. If you are planning on doing this, go look for ultralight everything. Ultralight down jackets, ultralight I didn't even need down because of the time of year I went. But if I were in the winter, I would absolutely need a down jacket. Um, I think Katie had a Patagonia one that's like the big seller online. Um, and it was super small. I mean, it packed up ridiculously small. Um, ultra light everything, ultra light sleeping bag, everything made to pack small and be just a few ounces. Um, I used, I think I showed it in another episode, I used uh, trail boots. They, they did have a high top, but they, not really high. They were trail boots, they're Gore-Tex, so they would keep out wet, and I think that would be really useful in the winter. Had my feet gotten wet on this trip, I don't think it would have been a big deal. They do dry fast too. Um, a lot of serious ultralight hikers, they just don't care about Gore-Tex, so like whatever. They just their feet are wet, they dry out, whatever. They let their socks dry hanging on the back of their pack as they walk. But it is very wet there, and if you had a week of wet, you might want the Gore-Tex. But if you're really wading through stuff, you're just going to get wet anyway. I don't need the stability around my ankle. I prefer the lightweight of the boot and being able to feel the ground. So innovate um, rock light boots is what I use. They're, they're basically a trail runner with a high top. Um, but many people just do trail runners. Um, I use this for, if I thought I might do a podcast episode where I would use this, I didn't actually use it for that. I brought it though to get any photos of the Northern Lights if I saw a sign of them. And I did wake up every evening and look, you know, around two o'clock. I just, th there was nothing. Um, this is super lightweight and it's very small and it but you do need a tripod to get a picture of them so that's kind of a handy tip if you're not going at the time of year though I would have done better to have not brought it I brought it just in case um, I'm a camera buff and I like photos a lot but because I was hiking and bringing everything in a carry-on I probably should have just brought my phone this would have been enough. The pictures were good. It's an 8 or a, what is it, X10 or I don't know, iPhone X. I don't know what it's called, but it's got a really good camera, a good video, um, you know, video capacity. So I would recommend if you don't have an awesome digital camera and you don't care that much about it, bring this. Also, with your digital camera, you, it's really hard if you're backpacking to have a camera with wide-angle lens and 50. You know, 50 millimeter is kind of a safe bet for lots of different kinds of shots. If you're going to be in a city taking pictures of people and all, I probably should have just brought, I have a cheap wide-angle, I probably should have just brought that and not worried about, um, you know, just landscape was mainly all I took photos of. So 
I should have brought that. As it was, my phone did panoramas. That was okay. Um, the light was hard to handle. The phone handled it really well. I didn't handle it always so good. Um, and then the thing about if you're not super confident and you don't know your settings and read the light and immediately know, which I don't on this camera. My last digital camera, I was really getting good at it. This is a full frame. It's just different. Um, I didn't want to take a lot of time to take to bracket and take a zillion different options um, because I have someone with me and we're walking. We're moving through something. I wanted to experience what I was moving through. So honestly, for this trip, I would have been fine to have just brought my phone. Or instant cameras, that's cool. Um, or my uh, Yashica film camera would have been fun to bring. It's very heavy though. But the instant cameras are light, like the Instax. Instax is so good. The Instax Wise is, is big, but it's so light. It, it does really well. Hang on. Come on in. It does really well um, with the landscape. It does pretty good, and uh, it's just a quality instant photo every time, I feel like. So those are tips. Stick with it instant in your phone or just your phone, especially if you're backpacking. Now, if you're bringing, you know, my son and my husband to be my camera slaves, then bring them all. Bring your contraption and your TTV cameras. Go for it. Um, I had this book. It's a good one. It's a good overview of a lot of the... It starts with major sites, so you can really quick kind of plan your itinerary briefly but then it goes into details about other sites and it talks about the economy it talks about the people um, a lot of history and just interesting facts that's what I read from a lot on the trip and when you buy it you get a download free ebook on your phone so that's super great when you're backpacking you don't have to carry the real book um, I got this while I was there just this um, Traveler's Guide to Icelandic Folk Tales because it kind of lets you know some of the sagas and then some that aren't in this collection I have where they supposedly happened or different things, kind of like the, the sea stacks as trolls. That's interesting if you're driving around or hiking around. Um, let's see, any more tips? Um, I did not bring my camera insert bag. Like I have one that you can insert spot. Don't, don't hit the camera. Okay, come on. Come on up. Oh my gosh, he missed me so much. They said he was sad without me, and now he goes everywhere I go. He won't let me out of his sight. I can't leave him for a long time, my baby. Um, I have like an insert bag. I can, it's padded. My camera goes in. I can sit it in any backpack. I can put it in um, panniers on my um, bike, anywhere. I didn't even bring it because of the extra weight and bulk. I just used rolled up clothing in my pack to cushion my camera. Maybe that's not smart. If I had more gear, I might wouldn't do that, but I just had one camera. so. Um, and then Katie had some compression bags that were really great, like the kind you vacuum out the, um, the air from, which is what I was trying to do with Ziplocs and failing miserably. Um, those are handy, especially if you're wanting to do some yarn shopping and get a sweater's worth of yarn. Oh, also, you need your pack to be good, like high quality. I mean, obviously, but um, when I was wearing my pack, just standing, you know how you stand in a plane? It lands and everybody just stands up all at once. <gasps> I mean, you're not going to get out fast. You're going to be standing for an hour, maybe, in that aisle. Okay, you got to quit licking. I don't want you to lick me. You're going to be standing like 45 minutes or an hour in this aisle. But everybody does it. And I had my pack on, but I didn't have my waist strapped on. And that's when I started getting a headache. I did not have a migraine. And it was that time in a woman's life where she would get a migraine if she gets them while I was in Iceland. I did not have a migraine the whole time. The minute we landed in LA, I started getting one. But I think I was standing there wearing the pack and I didn't have the waist strapped on and I just waiting and standing, doing nothing but standing. I think that's part of why. So a good pack, 
that fits a woman's body, if you're a woman, or whatever, that's big enough for you, small enough for you, so that the weight's distributed good. Obviously, that's a good, a good deal, and it needs to be, check your carry-on size limit. Wow Air um, only allows 22 pounds. I was well under that. I had like just 16 pounds, but I could have been even lighter. And mine can smoosh down and be slightly smaller, but it's actually at its full expanded size too big for a carry-on. So, yeah, right. Um, yeah. Like it. I'm trying to think. <laughs> what? Oh, you're looking for your angle? I, there's no angle for me. This is called tired. So tired. Mm, this, this is called sleep deprived. <laughs> mm -hmm. And oh, after tomorrow, I'm really gonna be. I know, right? We're gonna look great. Yeah. It's gonna be beautiful. But let's just do this. There we go. All of a sudden. No, it mm. just doesn't help. Mm. Whatever I do. Just so that your <laughs> we'll just smile a lot. Mm. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll lean like this. <laughs> yeah, Cabin. perfect. Um, so I'm trying to think, anything else? What would be your word of warning to anyone? Uh, watch out for falling rocks on the beach. <laughs> yes, definitely. Take those warnings seriously. Well, I think that in general. Oh, I realized I don't want to bring a big camera set up anymore. Oh, Unless, yeah. like, I have my yeah. husband and son to carry all the cameras. Not worth it. It was so much trouble, and the phone camera. It was fine. It, yeah. For backpacking, it was good. Yeah. I think my word of warning is to look up stuff and make yeah. sure that everything is open. Right. Because that was a big disappointment. We wanted to do a geothermal river hike. Mm -hmm. It was going to be a really long hike and really mm -hmm. fun. And then you can get in the water at any point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, do put moisturizer in your hair before Blue Lagoon yes. and do pull your hair up or you don't you're going to have dry locks. Don't water or you'll be sad. Mm -hmm. You might have it all break off. Mm -hmm. We have no hair. My hair used to be down to my waist before this trip. <laughs> this is a fake bun. <laughs> Not quite, but our hair is gross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? I'm trying to think of handy tips. Handy tips for Iceland. Um, bring a bandana for your hikes because your nose will run. <laughs> oh yeah, if you're not used to the cold, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what else? Wool, wool shirts. Whoa. They won't mm -hmm. stink because you'll have to wear. If you're wool. backpacking, you yeah, will yeah, have yeah. to wear your clothes multiple times. Yeah. yeah, we did this really light, so we only brought like. I only brought two pairs of pants. <laughs> no, I brought more, but I didn't bring a lot of socks because the, like, the hiking socks are like this yeah. thick, rolled up. So anyway, um, so you guys, have you been thinking about what we were discussing? It's been like three weeks, I guess, since we talked about um, being outside more and active. I have some things I'm going to show in my next episode where I talk more about that. Um, some pictures actually um, one of you has given me of how you do it one of the ways you get outdoors um, I appreciated that too I just really realized this how important it is for me that I be outside and um, I came home reinvigorated to do that uh, even though I don't live in the most beautiful place we do have a country road it's nice to run down it as long as there aren't a pack of stray dogs <laughs> to chase me. Um, there's not much else though. It's it's not super beautiful, but you know what? Studies show that just a patch of grass on a median can do something to your um, your thought life, your creativity, um, increase serotonin, things like that. So I'm going to be reading more about it, and I want to talk to you about just some of the statistics on being outdoors, on say walking barefoot outdoors, which is something I do like to do when I can. In fact, um, my husband and I tried that in the field the other day and I totally was getting stickers and things <laughs> to put my shoes back on, but um, just that regular walking. And I'm back at it with my dogs. I worked in my garden yesterday. Um, any excuse I can to get outdoors. Um, and I wear a big floppy hat a lot. I even run with it. I look stupid, but 
uh, that way my skin doesn't get too much sun exposure. So I'm interested to hear what you guys do to get outdoors and um, to get moving, just to get a break from modern stress. And by stress I mean the screens, the deadlines, the constant uh, attention of the phone, wanting your attention. Um, I'm interested to hear what you guys think about it. One last thing I wanted to mention before it's like halfway over. It's time for the tops, tanks, and tees knit along that Shannon Cook does in the Very Shannon group on Ravelry. I do it every year. Um, oh no. Mm, my yarn is stuck. Okay. Uh, it's tops, tanks, and tees, and the summer sweater knit along are kind of traditions now for me. Um, and I'm active on that board. If you want to join in, you can. It can be a whip. You don't have to have just cast on with the group. It's just through the month of May, so it ends at the end of the month. Um, there won't be an extension, but you don't have to finish your project by the end. Go to, if you're interested, the Very Shannon Ravelry group and go to the thread about the Tops, Tanks, and Tees cow. It tells you right at the beginning how to register. It's something off-site. It's on her website. There's a registration page. If you register, you are um, in the running for good prizes. This is um, probably the best giveaways of any knit-along I've ever seen. Uh, she's, she goes way over the top. She only has like three winners, and there's a lot that's split up between the three people, but it's a if you win, it's really great. Uh, I won for a Downton Abbey knit along years and years ago. I got some stitch markers from, uh, I think it was Ashley of the Red Sock Blue Sock Yarn, her first business name. I, I don't remember what it was called. And, uh, and I got yarn, some Madeline Tosh, no, 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 it was ducked up wool. It was beautiful, red colorway um, <clears throat> in a pattern collection of shawls. It was a great prize and I was not the top prize winner even. So anyway, this is a big knit along but and there's the, the conversation thread moves fast but you don't have to keep up with it unless you want to. Um, I find lots of interesting talk, very supportive. I learn something every single knit along. Um, someone just mentioned a helix style of alternating skeins while knitting. I have an idea of what that means, but I'm going to check it out, and I think she'll further elaborate. And that might be something I need to do when I'm alternating skeins on a sweater. But I wanted to show you, I am doing Zara by Deanna Walla. Um, let me find it. I'll show you a picture. I've had this in my queue for a year or so. It's really cute. And I'm doing it in Lindy Chain by Knit Picks because I've got lots of that. Oop, is that good? Do you see it there? It's kind of cropped and oversized. I don't know if I'm going to make mine that cropped or not. I might go down just one little square section more just because I feel like it will be for sure more wearable. It will still be more cropped than a lot of my tank tops and things I wear are really long so it's still kind of cropped. Um, I can always make another one day but when I like something it's really hard. It's really hard to make myself crop it. I just always want to go a little more because it's so pretty watching it work up. So here's what I've got. <clears throat> I'm doing it in black with a, um, a cream colored contrast stripe. And you can see, I've already, the vertical stripes you work in, these uh, horizontal, I'm sorry, the horizontal stripes, you just work like regular striping. These vertical stripes will be added later. And uh, I'm interested to see how that works with an applied crochet thing. I've never done, I don't think, before. <clears throat> so this is, it's all kind of smushed up. It looks really small. But this is about half of one side 
Um, I'm going to do at least this much more. And uh, it's moving okay. It's not too slow. Uh, linen never, this is a linen cotton blend. It never works as fast as wool. I, it's hard to get in a rhythm with linen for me. But um, the product is so wearable in the heat. Like right now, I'm wearing this to show it to you. I would never be wearing this normally.